Hi guys, I don't know if you came from my first video of how I got into PA school as a first time applicant, but in that video, I said that I would create this video of how to get into PA school. I wanna preface this by saying this is kind of a general guide and it's meant for like pre-PA as well as people that are looking into going into PA profession getting into PA school and the PA process is not streamlined and there are definitely differences and um, things that I will not be covering in this video, but some of the topics that I will be covering is the academics, standardized testing, the cost of that, what I used to study for the GRE, as well as volunteering, healthcare experience, so PCE versus HCE, and then how to find that, and then shadowing, letters of recs, the CASPER exam, CASPA app, as well as secondaries and the fees, and the interview. Why don't we jump on into this video because I think this video might be a bit long because there's a lot to cover. First, let's go into academics. So you definitely do need your bachelor's degree. However, there's a common misconception that you need to be a science major, which is farther from the truth. I know a lot of PAs and PA students that were history, business, psychology majors, it even probably gives you a unique perspective and something that makes you a little bit different than someone like me who is a biology major. The reason why I chose biology was because a lot of the prereqs aligned really closely to being a bio major. Some prerequisite courses, this really differs between each school, but I will say some of the common prerequisite courses I saw was anatomy, physio with lab, biology with lab, chemistry with lab, as well as genetics, microbiology with lab, and then some schools I saw were biochemistry as well as organic chemistry, um, Spanish was a requirement for USC, and then I saw medical terminology sometimes. For this, print out the prerequisite courses required for the schools that you're looking into. In addition to that, I'd make maybe a Google Sheets and then compare all the prerequisite courses and see which one aligns and which ones don't. For me, Duke and USC were my top two choices, so I was willing to take an additional course, um, Spanish, so two courses actually, for the entire year of Spanish for USC. However, for some schools that I was kind of on the border and they weren't my top choice schools, I wasn't willing to take additional courses, so I decided against them. And I think having it all printed out on and having it on Google Sheets really helped me decipher kind of what was required, what I decided I want to do, and what schools I wanted to apply to. Following this, let's talk about the GPA. Of course, this is definitely a major component of your application. However, I want to preface this by saying do not let your GPA deter you from applying to PA school. Um, many PA schools really take a holistic approach while looking at your application as a whole. In addition to that, people that are looking at your applications understand that we're human beings. We make mistakes. We are not experts in every single class that we're taking. You may be acclimating to the competitive nature of going to a university and really having a upward trajectory is definitely a bonus to have on your GPA, like showing that you're improving over time on the application itself. They provide you with a space to put why maybe you performed poorly in one specific quarter or semester. Many schools really do take a holistic approach when looking at applicants. However, I do want to preface this by saying if you saw my last video, I did take an interview at one specific school. However, this school didn't take a holistic approach. So however many applicants they received at the deadline, they looked at the students with the highest GPAs and they offered them an interview. And so I know that there are schools that don't take holistic approach like that school and reference to your GPA. However, I think the majority of schools that I looked at took a holistic approach. The GRE could potentially help strengthen your academics. However, I know that some PAs do say that the GRE is kind of more of a checkbox. So if you just get a 300 above, then they kind of just move on. I just tried to do my best and moved on because I only had three weeks, three to four weeks to study for it. So I'll explain how, what kind of score I wanted to get, how, why I came to that decision when we talk about the GRE. Following this, let's talk about standardized testing. So that would include the GRE and the PCAT. Not all schools require it. And there's a website, I'll link it down below, that I utilized to determine which schools did and didn't require the GRE. Of course, cross-reference this with the school that you're thinking about applying to and double check that they don't require the GRE on their website itself. So for the PCAT, I didn't take it, so I can't give you any advice. However, I'll link some videos down below that I saw on the PCAT. The GRE, it's a $205 and it's $27 to send to each school. However, on the day that you're taking it, you can send it up to four schools for free. So have the code 
for the schools ready for you when you take the GRE. How I deciphered and how I decided what kind of score I was trying to aim for, of course, try your best, but I only had three to four weeks to study for it. In addition to that, I was working like 30 hours a week. I was taking uh, anatomy and physio and I was commuting and volunteering. So I definitely had a limited amount of time. I went to Duke and USC, which were my top two schools. And I looked at their GRE scores of the applicants and the people that were admitted. And that was kind of the ballpark of where I wanted to score within the GRE. So for the GRE, it consists of two essays, an issue essay and an argument essay, and you're provided 30 minutes each, two quantitative sections. So that's 20 questions in 35 minutes, and then two verbal sections, which is 20 questions in 30 minutes, and then one additional section of either quant or verbal, and that's not graded. Following that, the study prep, I think average is one to three months with eight to 12 hours a week. I personally study three to four weeks. I know people that study two weeks to up to three months. In my opinion, the best way to really study for the GRE is of course go over the topics because these topics are things that we haven't done since like high school so it's kind of vague in my memory following that i would say take practice exams because that really not only allows you to test your knowledge of the information that's on the exam itself but really acclimate you to the length of the exam because it's over four hours long the material that i used won the five pound book of the gre practice problems which is 22 dollars, and i would say a lot of people recommended it and i thought it was decent but i didn't think it was a holy grail second the official guide to the gre general test which was 22 dollars i recommend this. It had two tests that were actually in the textbook and then two online tests. So that kind of helps you prepare the style of the GRE because it's an online test for most individuals. Third is 500 essential words and the advanced Manhattan prep. So there's two different things. So they're $15 each. I recommend this. However, if you're really trying to save money, I would utilize the Magoosh app because there were definitely like maybe 100 or 200 words that were overlapping within these flashcards and then the app itself, which is free. And then utilize the EST website, which is free. And they provide two free practice tests. And I would recommend buying the additional practice tests on their website. However, I didn't just because I was in a time crunch. Following this, the GRE vocabulary flashcard app that I told you from Magoosh, which is free. The EST website itself has two free practice exams. In addition to that, you can buy additional practice exams. However, I didn't just because I was in a time crunch. Then the GRE vocabulary flashcards I spoke about on Magoosh and then Greg Matt on YouTube. This really helped me with my essays because I'm not the strongest essay writer. In addition to this, he goes over the practice problems that EST has on the practice exams. He explained why they came to this specific answer. In addition to this, I've heard positive things about Magoosh. However, I've not utilized it, so I can't recommend it. So let's move on to the next topic, which is volunteering. I really recommend you getting involved within your community, the organizations and clubs within your university. It doesn't have to be healthcare related. Honestly, I just did things that I was really passionate about. So I'm really passionate about diminishing food inequity. So I volunteered with Feeding America. In addition to that, I really enjoy education. So I did a lot of tutoring and mentoring underserved youth within my community. I became an organic chemistry learning assistant and taught organic chemistry to other students in my university. In my opinion, take it with a grain of salt because I'm not in the admissions committee. I'm just someone about to start PA school, I would participate in a few organizations, but really getting involved in those organizations and potentially trying to get into some leadership positions within those organizations. So let's go over healthcare experience. I would recommend you to have over 2,000 hours of healthcare experience. Of course, there are different schools that don't require as much healthcare experience or don't require it at all, but overall, I saw most programs um, would like to see over 2,000 hours of healthcare experience and I definitely was on the weaker side of this. I had just above 2,000 hours, so I was definitely baking on the fact that they took a holistic approach while looking at my application. Let's go into PCE and HCE. So PCE, which is called patient care experience, you are directly responsible for the patient's care versus healthcare experience. It's both paid and unpaid work in the health or healthcare related fields, and you are not directly responsible for the patient's care, but you might still have patient interaction. Most of the time when I was looking at the requirements and I was researching for PA school, some of the things that were under PCE was back office MA, CNA, although some schools 
didn't accept that as PCE. EMT, PTA, paramedic, phlebotomist, military corpse band, RN. For HCE, it was medical scribe. In addition to that, a front office MA. Someone in my last video asked me how to find healthcare experiences. And I would say first word of mouth through friends and families. In addition to that, joining Facebook groups for like pre-PA students. I am in several and there has been a lot of job postings of individuals like myself leaving for PA school in August. So there's been a lot of job openings right now. I found my job on Craigslist. However, I know this is really sketchy and you have to be really careful. Research it diligently, cross-reference in addition to let people know where you're going, what time you'll be back, call someone, have someone come with you even to the interview, like have them sit in the parking lot. Just be really diligent and careful because I know Craigslist is kind of sketchy. <laughs> Five, let's move on to shadowing. So shadowing generally is shadowing with a PA, MD, or NP. I know there is sometimes a preference to shadow with a PA just because we're going into the PA profession itself. I researched this and the average hours for accepted applicants is 94 hours of shadowing. I know finding a provider is definitely difficult to come by. A few of the methods I utilized was one, asking friends and families, going to your local hospitals around you and seeing if they have a shadowing program, asking your general practitioner or even Cold, call, cold calling or cold emailing providers within your vicinity. Okay, so let's move on to letters of recommendations. Most programs require three and you have the opportunity to send out five. I personally sent out four, which would be my supervisor. So the PT I work for, the MD that I shadowed, my teacher, my organic chemistry teacher, as well as he was my supervisor as my organic chemistry learning assistant for a year. And then following that, my English professor. Each school is different on who they require a letter of rec from, but I would say generally it's usually your supervisor Supervisor at work, a provider that you shadowed, and then a science professor. I'd recommend you send out these letter of recommendation requests early just because many of these individuals are often getting a lot of requests because all of us healthcare professionals are applying around the same time and I know some students have been turned down just because they requested it a little bit too late. In addition to this, I would provide them with additional information such as your resume. Let's move on to the CASPER exam which is an online judgment test and it focuses on key qualities. I have it written down here. Collaboration, communication, empathy, equity, ethics, motivation, problem solving, professionalism, resilience, self-awareness. And this test is 90 minutes and you're offered a 15 minute break in between. I would definitely recommend you to take the free practice exam on the website itself. In addition to that, learn how to type fast because I type really slow and I think that really hindered my performance on responding to the questions. So hindering my performance overall. How I studied for it is is I use YouTube videos from other students. In addition to that, I use YouTube videos from BMO, and then I use BMO's Ultimate Guide to the Casper Test, which is $20. The test itself, it gives you 12 situations with three questions, and you are you have to respond to kind of how you would react to the situation or the question they're providing you. Move on to CASPA. CASPA is just kind of a portal that the PA profession utilizes for you to apply to PA school. It opens on April 30th and the first application that you send out is $179 and the following applications you send out are $55 each. Definitely start early. There's a lot of information you need to fill out. In addition to that, send out your official letter of recommendation request when it opens. Send your transcript to them. Getting up your transcript verified can take some time, as well as your CASPA app as a whole can take some time. Many schools are rolling admissions, so time is of the essence. But if you're applying to schools that aren't rolling admission, then you don't have to rush as much. Some of the questions that they asked you is why PA as well as how has COVID-19 impacted you? So after you submit your CASPA app, some schools have secondaries. The majority of them do, and it's around two to seven essays. I would say they're not really essays. They're maybe like one to three paragraphs long, even though it's a lot and I was definitely overwhelmed. Many of the times the questions they, they ask you are definitely overlapping with each school and you can definitely tweak each essay that you use or response that you use for a different school into the other school and just alter and edit for that school. And I recommend you looking at what each school kind of emphasizes and inputting that into your secondaries as well, because it shows that you are well aligned with the school that you're applying to and maybe that will make them like you better and offer you an interview. The fees range from around, I think like $40 to $70 per school. So it's definitely costly. Um, for me, it was definitely a little bit cheaper just because I didn't have to fly out to the schools that I interviewed with. Let's move on to interviews. So some of the notable interview styles I had was traditional, 
MMI group interview and then two on one, which is two faculties, members, and then me, the interviewee. And then I would definitely reach out to the programs that you're applying to to determine what type of interview it is if they don't specify it on their website. In addition to that, if it is a closed interview, which a closed interview means that they don't have your application on file, so they haven't really researched you versus an open interview is that they have your application, they can really ask you super detailed questions about your application, so definitely be prepared. I would definitely recommend you during the interview season to check your inbox daily, as well as your spam. One of my friends and I, we both inter we both were extended interview invites on the same day for the same program. However, it was sent to my inbox and it was sent to her spam. Thankfully, she checked her spam, so she was able to interview at that program, but that's definitely something that has happened to other individuals as well. So let's go over some of the tools that I utilize when interviewing. One is how to ace the PA school interview second edition by Andrew Rodnikin, which is $33. Two, multiple mini interview, winning strategies from admissions faculty. Three, YouTube videos and Googling common questions. And then four, PA school interview guide, tips, tricks, and techniques to impress your interviewees by Savannah Perry, which is $23. For the last one, I didn't utilize it that much, but one of my friends did and she highly recommends it. I really recommend you to review your application. Think about memorable memorable experiences that you've had and how it has impacted you. For your responses, definitely be personable and don't say that you've done it. Show that you've done it through your experiences. Show with your actions. In addition to this, I recommend you recording yourself answering some of the common questions that you most likely are going to get when interviewing. So like, why do you want to be a PA? Why PA versus MD versus DO slash NP or RN? Why this school? seeing how you respond to these answers and seeing kind of things that you might not recognize what you do when you're speaking like saying um or like um, moving your hands a lot looking to the side those are things that you can definitely correct and you might not recognize until you record yourself and kind of watch yourself back even though it's really cringy <laughs> know the regulation of laws that are impacting the pa profession currently in addition to that the state that you're interviewing with i want to make a side note here definitely try your best be calm confident, recognize they're interviewing you for a reason and that this interview is a two-way street. So you, not only are they interviewing you, but you are interviewing them. Also use this time as, to see if they have the qualities that you want in a program. So I think we're all done here. I think I covered all the topics I wanted to cover within this video. If there's any topics or any questions that you have, definitely comment them down below and I'll try to respond in a timely manner. Following this video, I think I will be creating a video about mistakes I made in CASPA while applying in addition to that, um, what I'm doing to prepare before or going into PA school. If there's any other video topics that you'd like me to cover, any questions you'd like me to answer, put it down below. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Definitely like and subscribe and I will see you later.